The middle part of my strategy, and it, it, it's perfectly placed, I believe, is, is A, accountability. It sits at the middle, it's, it's, it's at the core and the heart. I believe it's the most important. And that basically says that we have an accountability to others and we have an accountability to ourselves. First, our accountability to others. I like to look at it as our teammates in sports speak, but I don't look at it as just teammates in a baseball sense. I look at it as, as family members, as people we work with, bringing our best selves to each situation. I believe we have an obligation to do that to try our best. You know, a major league clubhouse is, is a strange dynamic. Over 162 games, if you look around in a clubhouse, there's always somebody who's doing pretty well. And they've got the music up real loud. And then there's some people over here that aren't doing as well. And they're kind of grumpy a little bit. So it was always trying to build that right chemistry. And I had a teammate who was great at breaking through that sort of tension. How many, are, how many people are from Southern California here? So you're familiar with Rex Hudler? Some of the announcing that he does on Angel Games? Well, Rex was a great teammate. He was somebody who made a career basically out of his positive attitude and his enthusiasm. He used to walk into that clubhouse, he'd look around and he'd say, what are you gonna be today? Are you gonna be a fountain or are you gonna be a drain? And I thought that was a great statement. You know, you could either be caught up in your own world and be a drain, or you could have your house in order enough to lift somebody else up and understand that the entire team's chemistry was the important thing. Rex had another story with, uh, that I went a long way towards his attitude and, and accountability. Back when Bo Jackson played for the Angels, it was, Bo was, coming up to bat in a big, crucial part of the game. Couple men on, the Angels were down by three runs. Bo Jackson stepped up and hit a three-run home run. Wow, exciting. Late in the game, he kind of ran around the bases, stepped on first, stepped on second, stepped on third, came home, came in the dugout, kind of limp-wristedly shook everybody's hand and sat down. Well, you can imagine Rex, he was Next day in stretching exercises, he looks over to Mark Langston, a teammate, and he says, Mark, <clears throat> I can't believe Bo. He had a chance to pump our boys up there. He didn't do anything. He didn't show any emotion. Mark looked at Rex and said, uh, well, why don't you go explain that to Bo? So Rex said, I will. To his credit, he did. He walked over to Bo Jackson, and they had an animated discussion. He walked away. Sure enough, a couple days later, cut maybe a week or two, Bo Jackson comes up in a very similar situation. This time the Angels are down by one run. One man on, Bo Jackson, pinch hit, home run. So everyone's aware of what's happened now, sitting in the dugout. Bo takes off. I mean, he just sprinting to first. He stomps on first base, stomps on second, pounds on third, comes home and jumps on the plate. Who's waiting for him at the top step but Rex Hudler? <laughs> Bo comes in, high fives Rex, chest bumps him and knocks him to the ground. <laughs> Rex is laying in sunflower seeds, tobacco juice, Gatorade. He's got cups all around. He looks up at Bo and he goes, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of enthusiasm we need. <laughs> Rex is something. But that went a long way towards our accountability, you know, bringing our best selves and the effect we can have on other people. More importantly, I believe in accountability is our obligation to the abilities we've been given, no matter what they are. You know, you, we may have someone over here who's the most talented person in the room and someone over here who's the least talented, but I believe the obligation to make the most of those abilities is equal. One of the great joys of my career was playing in the beautiful ballparks all over the country. Fenway Park, Yankee Stadium, Toronto, Texas, Anaheim, all over. 
These fields are immaculate, they're perfect. You don't get a bad hop. The mounds are incredible. But many times, underneath those fields and in the hallways and tunnels of the stadiums is where the players hang out. And once my playing became known around the country, word got out of how I played, families started to come. People asked for meetings, moms and dads. And they would bring their kids. And I was just a baseball player, you know? But they'd bring kids facing challenges that I had never dreamed of. Birth defects and handicaps, different things. Wanting to know advice, asking me what I would say. And I felt a responsibility to that. Although I was trying to be the best baseball player I could be, I wasn't necessarily trying to be a role model. In the end, what I felt like was the most important thing I could pass on to these kids and to their parents was to try, to get in the game, take a risk, make the most of whatever abilities you've been given. Never use the circumstances of your life as an excuse, because people will allow it, you know? People will forgive it, but you'll know in your heart that you've given in and that you haven't made the most of what you've been given. It's that mirror test and it, sounds, it doesn't sound that hard, but take a look in the mirror and ask, am I making the most of the abilities I've been given? Whatever they are and whatever aspect of your life you're in. Am I being the best dad I can be? Am I being the best pitcher? You know, one time I was playing for the New York Yankees and I was having a tough time and average, I was just average, 500. And the New York Times writer wrote that I was an underachiever. And uh, my determination slipped a little bit. And I asked him, I said, you know, how can you call me an, an underachiever? And he looked at me and said, you're not pitching well. He was exactly right. I wasn't living up to the abilities that I had. The fact is I was given a pretty good left arm. And the focus is on what has been given not what's been taken away. And that's the focus, what I always wanted it to be, and I slipped right there, and I always regret saying that to him. I always regret wanting that excuse. Never make excuses for the circumstances you were born in. 